The ultrasound image trembled in my hands, a grainy black-and-white snapshot of betrayal. I stared at Thomas, my husband of six years, waiting for him to say it was all a mistake. But his eyes, usually warm and reassuring, now avoided mine. Evelyn, I know this is a shock, he began, his voice barely above a whisper. But Adeline needs our help. I slammed the picture onto the kitchen counter. Your sister is pregnant? And you want us to raise her child? The words tasted bitter in my mouth. Thomas ran a hand through his graying hair. She can't keep it. The father, he's married. It would ruin everything. And what about us, Thomas? What about our plans? I could feel my carefully constructed world crumbling around me. He reached for my hand, but I pulled away. We always said we'd wait to have children. Our careers, our travels. This isn't our child, Evelyn. It's different. I laughed, a harsh sound that surprised even me. Different? How is raising your irresponsible sister's baby any different? The doorbell rang, shattering the tense silence between us. Thomas looked relieved at the interruption. That'll be Mom and Dad. They wanted to talk about the situation. Great, just great. I smoothed my hair and took a deep breath, steeling myself for the onslaught of Margaret and Joseph's misplaced concern. As soon as they entered, Margaret enveloped me in a perfume-scented hug. Oh, Evelyn, dear, how are you holding up? I extracted myself from her embrace. I'm fine, Margaret, though I'd be better if someone had bothered to consult me about this arrangement. Joseph cleared his throat. Now, Evelyn, we all need to pull together as a family. Adeline made a mistake, but a mistake, I interrupted. Getting a parking ticket is a mistake. This is a life-altering decision that affects all of us. Thomas placed a hand on my shoulder. Honey, please, let's just hear them out. Bad. I shrugged him off and turned to face my in-laws. No, Thomas. I want to know why everyone seems to think it's okay to make decisions about my life without even asking me. Margaret's face crumpled. But, dear, we thought you'd be happy. You and Thomas have been married for so long and no children. By choice, I exploded. We chose not to have children. We have goals, dreams. And now you all want to throw that away because Adeline couldn't be bothered with birth control? The room fell silent. I could see the shock on their faces, but I was beyond caring. Joseph was the first to speak. Evelyn, I know this is difficult, but Adeline is family. We can't turn our backs on her. And what about me? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Am I not family, too? Thomas reached for me again. Of course you are. That's why we need you. Adeline can't do this alone. I stepped back, suddenly feeling claustrophobic in my own home. I need some air, I muttered, grabbing my keys from the hook by the door. Evelyn, wait! Thomas called after me, but I was already halfway down the driveway. As I slid into the driver's seat of my car, I caught a glimpse of myself in the rearview mirror. The woman staring back at me looked lost, angry, and more than a little scared. I started the engine, not sure where I was going, but knowing I couldn't stay in that house a moment longer. My phone buzzed with a text from Thomas. Please come back. We need to talk about this. I tossed the phone onto the passenger seat and pulled out of the driveway. As I drove away from the life I thought I knew, one thought kept echoing in my mind. How had everything gone so wrong so quickly? I found myself parked outside the small art gallery where Thomas and I first met. The irony wasn't lost on me. Six years ago, this place held the promise of a bright future. Now it felt like a monument to shattered dreams. My phone buzzed again. Thomas. I ignored it, letting my mind wander back to those early days. We were so in sync then, sharing our hopes and plans over late-night coffee and scribbled notes. We'll travel the world, Thomas had said, his eyes sparkling with excitement. Write my novels, showcase your jewelry, no kids to tie us down. I'd agreed wholeheartedly. We'd build our careers, see the places we'd only dreamed of, and then maybe we'd consider starting a family. But now, a tap on my window startled me out of my reverie. It was Claire, my best friend and fellow jewelry designer. Evelyn, what are you doing here? Her concerned face peered in at me. I rolled down the window, forcing a smile. Just reminiscing, I guess. Claire's eyes narrowed. Thomas called me. He's worried sick. What's going on? I sighed, unlocking the door. Get in. It's a long story. As Claire settled into the passenger seat, I spilled everything. Adeline's pregnancy, Thomas's decision, the ambush with his parents. With each word, the anger I'd been holding back bubbled to the surface. 
They just expect me to give up everything we've worked for, I finished, gripping the steering wheel so tightly my knuckles turned white. Our dreams, our plans, none of it matters because precious Adeline screwed up again. Claire placed a hand on my arm. Oh, Ev, I'm so sorry. What are you going to do? I shook my head. I don't know. I can't just abandon our life together, but I can't raise Adeline's child either. It's not fair. Have you told Thomas how you feel? I laughed bitterly. He's not listening. None of them are. It's like I don't even exist in this equation. My phone buzzed again. This time it was a text from Adeline. Please come home. We need to talk. I showed Claire the message, my jaw clenching. See? Now she wants to talk, after everything's been decided. Claire squeezed my hand. Maybe this is your chance to make them listen. Go home, Evelyn. Fight for what you want. I nodded slowly, starting the car. You're right. It's time they heard me. When I pulled into our driveway, I was surprised to see Adeline's car parked haphazardly near the garage. Taking a deep breath, I walked into the house. The scene that greeted me was chaos. Adeline was sobbing on the couch while Margaret hovered nearby, wringing her hands. Thomas and Joseph were in a heated discussion by the fireplace. All eyes turned to me as I entered. Evelyn, Thomas rushed over. Thank God you're back. We have a situation. I raised an eyebrow. Another one? Adeline hiccuped through her tears. The father, he found out. He's threatening to tell his wife everything if I don't get rid of the baby. My heart sank, just when I thought things couldn't get more complicated. What do you want to do, Adeline? I asked my voice surprisingly calm. She looked up at me, mascara streaking her cheeks. I, I don't know. I can't have an abortion, but I can't keep it either. Thomas said. He said you'd help. I felt all the air leave my lungs. I don't know. Did he now? Thomas at least had the decency to look ashamed. Evelyn, I know we should have discussed this first, but... No, I cut him off. No more excuses, Thomas. This isn't just about Adeline anymore. This is about us, our marriage, our future. The room fell silent. I could feel the weight of everyone's stares, but for once I didn't care. I won't do it, I said firmly. I won't give up my life, my dreams, to clean up someone else's mess, not even family. Margaret gasped. Evelyn, how can you be so selfish? I turned to her. Years of pent-up frustration finally boiling over. Selfish? You want to talk about selfish? Let's talk about how you've enabled Adeline's behavior for years. Let's talk about how you're all so quick to sacrifice my happiness without a second thought. I looked at each of them in turn, ending with Thomas. If you want to raise this child, fine, but you'll do it without me. With that, I turned and walked out, out leaving a stunned silence in my wake. As I closed the door behind me, I realized with startling clarity that nothing would ever be the same again. I sat in my studio, surrounded by half-finished jewelry pieces, trying to lose myself in work. But my mind kept drifting back to the chaos of the past few days. The doorbell rang, startling me out of my thoughts. I opened it to find Joseph standing there, looking uncomfortable. Evelyn, can we talk? he asked, his voice gruff. I hesitated, then nodded, letting him in. We sat in tense silence for a moment before he spoke. I know you're upset about all this, he began, but you have to understand, Adeline's always been delicate. I couldn't help but scoff. Delicate? Is that what we're calling it now? Joseph's face reddened. Now listen here. You don't know what it was like raising her. The tantrums, the rebellions. And whose fault is that? I shot back. You and Margaret have been cleaning up her messes for years. When does it stop? He looked away, unable to meet my eyes. We just wanted to protect her. And what about protecting your son's marriage? What about me? Joseph sighed heavily. Evelyn, you have to understand. Family comes first. I thought I was family, I said quietly. Before he could respond, my phone buzzed. It was a text from Claire. Turn on the news. Channel 5. Now. Frowning, I grabbed the remote and switched on the TV. My jaw dropped as I saw Adeline's face plastered across the screen. Local model Adeline Hartley has come forward with shocking allegations against prominent businessman Robert Caldwell. Hartley claims Caldwell is the father of her unborn child and has been pressuring her to terminate the pregnancy. I turned to Joseph, who looked as stunned as I felt. Did you know about this? He shook his head. She never said, Oh, God, Margaret's going to have a fit. As if on cue, my phone exploded with notifications. Texts from Thomas, missed calls from Margaret, even a message from Adeline herself. I'm sorry. I had to do something. 
I turned back to Joseph. This changes everything, doesn't it? He nodded slowly. Robert Caldwell. He's not just any businessman. He's running for mayor. If this gets out... It's already out, I said, gesturing to the TV. What was Adeline thinking? Joseph's phone rang. He answered it, his voice strained. Yes, Margaret, I'm seeing it now. No, I'm with Evelyn. We'll be right there. He hung up and looked at me pleadingly. Evelyn, I know you're angry, but we need you. Please. I closed my eyes, feeling the weight of the decision pressing down on me. Part of me wanted to refuse, to let them deal with the mess they'd created. But another part, fine, I said finally. But this is the last time. After this, I'm done cleaning up after Adeline. The drive to Thomas and Adeline's parents' house was tense. When we arrived, the scene was chaos. Margaret was in tears, Thomas was pacing, and Adeline... Adeline was nowhere to be seen. Where is she? I demanded. Thomas ran a hand through his hair. She's not answering her phone. We think she might have gone to confront Caldwell. My blood ran cold. Are you kidding me? After that stunt on the news? Margaret sobbed harder. My poor baby, what if he hurts her? I bit back a retort about Adeline hurting herself with her own actions. Instead, I turned to Thomas. We need to find her. Now. He nodded, grabbing his keys. As we headed for the door, I caught a glimpse of myself in the hallway mirror. The woman staring back at me looked tired, angry, and scared. But there was something else there, too. Determination. I realized then that this wasn't just about Adeline anymore. This was about standing up to years of enabling behavior, of misplaced priorities. As we stepped out into the night, I made a silent vow. This would be the last time I let Adeline's drama dictate my life. One way or another, things were going to change. The months following Adeline's televised scandal were a blur of tense silences and cold shoulders. I threw myself into my work, spending long hours in my studio, crafting intricate pieces that seemed to reflect the tangled mess of my life. Thomas and I barely spoke, our conversations reduced to clipped exchanges about household chores and bills. One crisp autumn morning, I woke to the sound of Thomas's phone ringing. His muffled voice drifted through the walls, urgent and worried. I tried to ignore it, but curiosity got the better of me. I crept to the door, straining to hear. Adeline, calm down. Where are you? The hospital? What happened? My heart sank. Of course it was Adeline. It was always Adeline. Thomas burst into our bedroom, his face pale. Evelyn, we need to go. Adeline's in labor. I stared at him, disbelief and anger warring inside me. And, his eyes widened. And, Evelyn, she needs us. She's scared and alone. She made her choices. Thomas, why is it always our job to pick up the pieces? He ran a hand through his hair, frustration evident in every line of his body. Because she's family. Please, Evelyn, I can't do this alone. I closed my eyes, feeling the weight of years of resentment pressing down on me, but beneath it all there was a tiny flicker of something else. Compassion? Duty? I wasn't sure. Fine, I said, my voice tight, but this is the last time. The drive to the hospital was tense, filled with unspoken words and simmering emotions. When we arrived, we found Adeline in a private room, looking smaller and more vulnerable than I'd ever seen her. Oh, thank God you're here she sobbed, reaching for Thomas. He rushed to her side, leaving me standing awkwardly by the door. Hours passed in a haze of doctors, nurses, and Adeline's screams. I found myself pacing the hallway, unable to bear the suffocating atmosphere of the delivery room. As dawn broke, a tiny cry pierced the air. Thomas emerged, his face a mix of exhaustion and wonder. It's a girl, he said softly. She's beautiful. I nodded, not trusting myself to speak. He hesitated, then added, Adeline, she wants to see you. Stealing myself, I entered the room. Adeline lay in the bed, cradling a small bundle. She looked up at me, her eyes red-rimmed and pleading. Evelyn, she whispered, I'm so sorry for everything. I, I can't do this. I'm not ready to be a mother. I felt a chill run down my spine. What are you saying, Adeline? She looked down at the baby, then back at me. I want you and Thomas to raise her. Please, you're the only ones I trust. The world seemed to tilt on its axis. I stared at her, unable to process what I was hearing. You can't be serious, Adeline. This is your child. I know, she said, tears streaming down her face. But I'll only mess her up, you and Thomas. You can give her the life she deserves. Before I could respond, Thomas appeared at my side. What's going on? I turned to him, my voice barely above a whisper. She wants us to take the baby. His eyes widened a mix of shock and... Was that hope? 
Evelyn, maybe we should consider? No, I cut him off, my voice sharp. Absolutely not. We agreed, Thomas. No children. Not now, not like this. Adeline's sobs grew louder. Please, Evelyn, I don't know what else to do. I looked from her to Thomas, to the tiny bundle in Adeline's arms. The baby stirred, letting out a soft coo. Something inside me cracked. I need air, I muttered, pushing past Thomas and out of the room. In the hallway, I leaned against the wall, my heart pounding. This was it. The moment that would define everything. I could walk away now, leave this mess behind and salvage what was left of my life with Thomas. Or I could stay, accept this responsibility that was never meant to be mine. As I stood there, torn between duty and desire, I realized that whatever choice I made, nothing would ever be the same the same again. The baby's cries echoed through our once peaceful home, a constant reminder of how drastically our lives had changed. It had been two weeks since we'd brought Adeline's daughter home, and I felt like I was drowning in a sea of diapers, sleepless nights, and unspoken resentment. I stood in the nursery, gently rocking the infant, when Thomas appeared in the doorway. His eyes were heavy with exhaustion, mirroring my own. Evelyn, he said softly, we need to talk. I nodded, placing the now sleeping baby in her crib. We made our way to the kitchen, where I mechanically started brewing coffee. The silence between us was thick with tension. Thomas cleared his throat. I've been thinking about our situation. I braced myself, knowing whatever he was about to say would change everything. I think, he continued, it might be best if you, if you quit your job. The mug I was holding slipped from my fingers, shattering on the floor. What? Thomas flinched, but pressed on. Just temporarily. The baby needs constant care, and my writing deadlines are piling up. We can't afford a full-time nanny, and your jewelry business? Well, it's not exactly bringing in steady income. I stared at him, disbelief and rage warring inside me. My business, the one I've poured my heart and soul into for years, the one that was supposed to fund our travels, our dreams? Evelyn, please, Thomas pleaded. This isn't forever, just until we figure things out. Figure things out? I laughed bitterly. Thomas, we didn't figure out having a baby. Your sister dumped her responsibilities on us and you just went along with it, and now you want me to give up everything I've worked for? His face hardened. This isn't just about you, Evelyn. We have a child to think about now. She's not our child, I exploded. She's Adeline's, and once again we're expected to clean up her mess. Thomas's eyes flashed with anger. How can you be so cold? That little girl in there needs us. She's innocent in all this. And I'm not, I shot back. I didn't ask for any of this, Thomas. We had plans, dreams. What happened to those? He ran a hand through his hair, frustration evident in every movement. Life happened, Evelyn. Sometimes we have to adapt. Adapt? I echoed. Is that what you call completely derailing our lives for your irresponsible sister? Thomas's face fell, a mix of disappointment and resignation. I thought you'd understand. I thought you'd want to help. Help? I laughed, the sound harsh even to my own ears. I've been helping. I've been up every night, changing diapers, feeding her. I've put my work on hold. But this, this is too much. I turned away, trying to collect my thoughts. When I faced Thomas again, my decision was made. I won't do it, Thomas. I won't give up my career, my identity, for this. His eyes widened in shock. Evelyn, please, we can work this out. But I was already moving, grabbing my keys and purse. I need some time to think, to... I don't know, but I can't be here right now. Where are you going? Thomas called after me, panic edging into his voice. I paused at the door, my hand on the knob. I don't know. But I do know this. If you make me choose between my life and Adeline's baby, you won't like the choice I make. As I stepped out into the cool evening air, I heard the baby start to cry again. I closed my eyes, fighting back tears of my own. This wasn't the life I'd signed up for, not the future we'd planned together. Walking to my car, I realized with startling clarity that I was at a crossroads. The path ahead was unclear, but one thing was certain. I couldn't keep living like this. Something had to give. As I drove away from the house, from Thomas, from the life that had been thrust upon me, I made a silent vow. It was time to reclaim my life, my dreams, and if that meant walking away from everything I'd known, then so be it. The lawyer's office felt suffocating, the air thick with tension and unspoken accusations. I sat across from Thomas, avoiding his gaze as our attorney droned on about asset division and custody arrangements. Custody. 
for a child that wasn't even ours. Mrs. Hartley, the lawyer's voice cut through my thoughts, have you come to a decision about visitation rights for your niece? I flinched at the word. Niece, it felt wrong, like a poorly fitting garment. I... I don't think that's necessary, I managed to say. Thomas's head snapped up, his eyes wide with disbelief. Evelyn, you can't be serious. She's family. Is she? I shot back, years of resentment bubbling to the surface. Or is she just another one of Adeline's messes that we're expected to clean up? The lawyer cleared his throat uncomfortably. Perhaps we should take a short recess. But Thomas was already on his feet, his face flushed with anger. How can you be so cold? That little girl needs us. I stood too, my hands shaking. And what about what I need, Thomas? What about our dreams, our plans? Do they mean nothing now? Before he could respond, the office door burst open. Margaret and Joseph stormed in, their faces twisted with righteous indignation. How dare you? Margaret shrieked, pointing an accusing finger at me. How dare you abandon that innocent child? I stumbled back, overwhelmed by the sudden onslaught. I'm not. This isn't. Joseph stepped forward, his voice low and menacing. We always knew you were too practical, too career-focused, but we never thought you'd be cruel. The room spun around me, accusations flying from all sides. I caught fragments of their tirade, selfish, heartless, unfit to be a mother. Each word felt like a physical blow. Enough, I shouted, surprising even myself with the force of my voice. The room fell silent, all eyes on me. You want to talk about cruelty? I said, my voice shaking with emotion. Let's talk about how you've enabled Adeline's behavior for years. Let's talk about how you've consistently put her needs above everyone else's, including your own son's. I turned to Thomas, tears stinging my eyes. And you. You promised me a life of adventure, of shared dreams. But the moment Adeline snapped her fingers, you were ready to throw it all away. Evelyn, please, Thomas pleaded, reaching for my hand. I jerked away. No, I said, my resolve hardening. I'm done. I'm done being the responsible one, the one who has to sacrifice everything for someone else's mistakes. I grabbed the divorce papers from the lawyer's desk, scrawling my signature across the bottom. There. It's done. The room erupted into chaos. Margaret wailed, Joseph shouted, and Thomas— Thomas just stared at me, a mix of shock and sorrow etched across his face. As I turned to leave, he caught my arm. Evelyn, wait. We can work this out. Please, don't throw away six years of marriage. I looked into his eyes, searching for the man I'd fallen in love with. But all I saw was a stranger, someone whose priorities had shifted so dramatically that I no longer recognized him. It's not me throwing it away, Thomas, I said softly. You did that the moment you chose Adeline's drama over our life together. With that, I walked out of the office, out of the building, and into the bright sunlight. My legs felt weak my heart racing as the magnitude of what I'd just done washed over me. As I stood on the sidewalk, untethered and alone for the first time in years, a strange mix of terror and exhilaration coursed through me. I had no idea what the future held, but I knew one thing for certain, I was finally free to find out on my own terms. My phone buzzed in my pocket. A text from Claire. How did it go? Are you okay? I took a deep breath, my fingers hovering over the keypad. Was I okay? I honestly didn't know. But as I looked up at the vast sky above me, I felt a glimmer of hope. Whatever came next, it would be my choice, my life. I typed a quick reply. It's done. Can I stay with you for a while? I think. I think I need a fresh start. As I hit send, I felt the first tentative steps towards a new beginning. The road ahead was uncertain, but for the first time in months, I felt ready to face it head on. The gentle hum of my jewelry studio filled the air as I carefully set a sapphire into a delicate silver setting. Three months had passed since I'd walked away from my old life, and I was finally starting to feel like myself again. My small apartment above Claire's garage wasn't much, but it was mine. No drama, no expectations, just peace. The shrill ring of my phone shattered the tranquility. Thomas's name flashed on the screen. My heart raced as I debated answering. We hadn't spoken since the divorce was finalized. Against my better judgment, I picked up. Evelyn? Thomas's voice was strained, panicked. I need your help. It's Dad. He's had a heart attack. The world tilted on its axis. Despite everything, Joseph had been like a father to me for years. Is he? He's stable but critical. Mom's a mess, and I can't—I can't handle everything alone. 
the baby, my deadlines, now this. I closed my eyes feeling the weight of responsibility settling back onto my shoulders. What about Adeline? Thomas's bitter laugh crackled through the line. She's in Bali with her new boyfriend, unreachable as usual. Of course she was. Some things never changed. Please, Evelyn, Thomas pleaded. I know I have no right to ask, but— I'll be there in an hour, I heard myself say, already reaching for my keys. The hospital was a chaos of beeping machines and hushed whispers. I found Margaret slumped in a chair outside Joseph's room, her face pale and drawn. Oh, Evelyn, she whimpered, reaching for me. I'm so glad you're here. I hesitated, then awkwardly patted her hand. How is he? Stable, but— She trailed off, her eyes filling with tears. The doctors say he'll need round-the-clock care when he comes home. I don't know how we'll manage. I glanced into Joseph's room, where Thomas stood by the bed, cradling Adeline's baby. The sight of them together sent a pang through my chest, a bittersweet reminder of the life I'd left behind. Thomas looked up, relief washing over his face when he saw me. Evelyn, thank God. Can you take Emma? I need to talk to the doctors. Before I could protest, he was pressing the baby into my arms. Emma gurgled, her tiny hand grasping my finger. I felt my resolve weakening. The next few days passed in a blur of hospital visits, sleepless nights, and frantic juggling of responsibilities. I found myself slipping back into old patterns, coordinating care schedules, fielding calls from concerned relatives, all while trying to keep my fledgling jewelry business afloat. One evening, as I was heating a bottle for Emma, Thomas cornered me in the kitchen. Evelyn, I don't know how to thank you for everything you've done. I shrugged, avoiding his gaze. It's fine. Anyone would do the same. No, they wouldn't, he said softly. You're, you're extraordinary. I was a fool to let you go. My heart stuttered. Thomas, don't. I miss you, he blurted out. We all do. Emma needs a mother, and I, I need you. For a moment, I let myself imagine it, slipping back into this life, raising Emma, being part of a family again. But then I remembered the suffocation, the loss of self, the constant sacrifices. No, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. I can't do this again, Thomas. I won't. His face fell. But everything's different now. We could make it work this time. I shook my head, feeling tears prick at my eyes. Nothing's changed. Adeline's still irresponsible. Your parents still enable her. And you? You still expect me to give up everything for someone else's choices. That's not fair, Thomas protested. Isn't it? I countered. Where's Adeline now? Why isn't she here helping her own parents? Thomas had no answer. I handed him the bottle. I'm sorry about your father, and I hope he recovers soon. But I can't stay. This isn't my life anymore. As I turned to leave, Margaret appeared in the doorway, her eyes wild. Joseph's taken a turn for the worse. The doctors say, they say we need to prepare for the worst. Thomas looked at me, desperation etched across his face. Evelyn, please, don't go. Not now. We need you. I stood frozen, torn between the urge to flee and the pull of familiar obligations. In that moment, I realized that the true test of my newfound independence was yet to come. I stood in the hospital hallway, my heart pounding as I watched Thomas and Margaret rush into Joseph's room, the weight of their expectations, their need, pressed down on me like a physical force. For a moment, I wavered, the urge to step in and take control almost overwhelming. But then I heard it, a soft cry from the waiting area. Emma, Adeline's daughter, my almost niece, was awake and fussing in her carrier. As I looked at her, a stark realization hit me. This wasn't my responsibility. It never had been. With shaking hands, I pulled out my phone and dialed a number I'd sworn I'd never use again. Hello? Adeline's voice, carefree and slightly slurred, answered on the third ring. Adeline, it's Evelyn. Your father's had a heart attack. He might not make it. You need to come home. Now. There was a long pause, then a sigh. I can't just leave, Evelyn. I'm in the middle of a shoot and— No. I cut her off, my voice hard. No more excuses. This is your family, Adeline. Your daughter. Your responsibility. Not mine. Not anymore. I hung up before she could respond, a strange sense of calm washing over me. I walked back to Joseph's room, where Thomas and Margaret were huddled together, tears streaming down their faces. I've called Adeline. I announced. She's on her way. Thomas looked up, hope and gratitude shining in his eyes. Thank you, Evelyn. I don't know what we'd do without you. I shook my head. No, Thomas. This is the last time. I'm not staying. But— 
Margaret began, but I held up a hand. I'm sorry about Joseph, truly, but this isn't my life anymore. You all need to learn all your own problems without expecting me to swoop in and fix everything. I turned to leave, but Thomas caught my arm. Evelyn, please, we can work this out. We can be a family again. For a moment, I let myself imagine it, the life I'd once thought I wanted. But as I looked at Thomas, at Margaret, at little Emma in her carrier, I realized something profound. I didn't want that life anymore. I wanted my own. Goodbye, Thomas, I said softly, gently removing his hand from my arm. Take care of your family. I need to take care of myself now. As I walked out of the hospital, my phone buzzed with a news alert. I glanced at it, then stopped in my tracks. The headline read, Local model Adeline Hartley arrested for theft and fraud. I stared at the screen, a mix of emotions washing over me. Shock, anger, and then... Relief. It was as if the last thread tying me to my old life had finally snapped. Weeks passed. I threw myself into my work, my jewelry designs gaining recognition in local artisan circles. I heard through the grapevine that Joseph had recovered, that Adeline was facing charges, that Thomas was struggling to balance his writing with single parenthood. But for the first time in years, I felt no obligation to step in and help. One sunny afternoon, as I was putting the finishing touches on a new necklace design, my doorbell rang. I opened it to find Claire standing there, a wide smile on her face. Get dressed, she announced. We're going out to celebrate. Celebrate what? I asked, bemused. She thrust a magazine into my hands. There on the cover was a photo of one of my necklaces, with the headline, Rising Star Evelyn Carter's Unique Jewelry Designs Take the Art World by Storm. As I stared at the cover, tears welling in my eyes, I felt a surge of pride and joy unlike anything I'd experienced before. This was my achievement, my dream realized. You did it, Ev, Claire said softly. You found yourself again. I nodded, unable to speak past the lump in my throat. As we headed out into the bright afternoon sun, I felt lighter than I had in years. The road ahead was still uncertain, but for the first time in a long time, I was excited to see where it might lead. My phone buzzed in my pocket, a text from Thomas. For a moment, I hesitated, then decisively switched it off. Whatever crisis he was facing, it wasn't mine to solve. My life was my own now, and I was finally truly free to live it on my own terms.